Another fun thing we can do with neutron stars is to try to work with them and try to figure out uh, some more interesting facts. I think it's fun to try to look at a neutron star and try to deal with some real numbers here. So assume we have a neutron star with the same density as the one we looked at before, has a mass of two solar masses, where the mass of the sun is around 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, and let's assume it has a diameter of 24 kilometers. And the first question is, what will be its surface gravity? In other words, if you were to stand on there, what would be g? Remember, if you stand on Earth, remember this fact that uh, on Earth, for example, uh, we have that g equals 9.81, that would be meters per second squared. So that means uh, that would be the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth, or that was what we call the surface gravity. Well, we can use the equation for surface gravity for any object, and the way we do that, well, we first start off with um, Newton's universal law of gravitation. It says that force due to gravity is going to be capital G, which is the universal gravitational constant. Uh, multiply that by one mass times another mass divided by the distance between them squared. That's the sort of general form for this gravitational force. So this is the force of attraction between two masses, uh, big M and little m, and uh, given that the distance between them is r. Now the way we actually find surface gravity, it turns out g, this little g right here, is defined as the gravitational force divided by just the little mass you're looking at. So in this case right here then, it would be just, well, if we divided this m, well, maybe I'll just write it out. So we have big G times big M times little m over r squared, and well, we're dividing by m. That means those little m's cancel out. So we're left with just, maybe I'll write this out a little bit nicer. So we're left with just that little g, the surface gravity, is going to equal uh, gravitational constant times the mass of the star, divide that by the distance squared. We're going to use this equation. Now, we have to look at, first of all, what's the distance here? What's this radius that we're looking at? I mean, that's going to be, in this case right here, we're going to be considering, you know, let's say you're standing right here at the surface of the neutron star, and you're standing at this distance away from its center. You'll have to excuse the noise as a helicopter landing at the hospital nearby. Uh, so if we look at this then, this right here is the situation we're looking at. We have a neutron star, we're sort of standing there at the surface at a distance r away from the center of it. Now we have the diameter, so that means the radius would be half of that. So that's important to know that the diameter is the whole distance is 24 kilometers. So the radius is going to be 12 kilometers. We're going to need that value. So then all we have to do is calculate g. So surface gravity will be equal to capital G, that's the universal gravitation constant. It's given by 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, if you use SI units, which we are. Multiply that by the mass of the star. Now we were told it had 2 times the mass of a sun, and the sun's mass is 2 times 10 to the 30. So this times 2 gives us 4 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. All that is divided by, in this case right here, we want the radius but we need it in meters. So this would be 12,000 meters, and we're going to square that answer. All I need to do now is get out my trusty calculator and calculate this. So let's do it. We'll do um, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. I'll just press enter. And multiply that answer by 4 times 10 to the 30. All right, that's this. Press enter, and I'm going to take that and divide it by, in brackets, 12,000 squared. It's important not to forget the squared. We end up with a value of 1.8, roughly, times 10 to the 12. Okay, so one point, well, if we're using only two significant figures, we'll say 1.9. So we're going to get then that g can equal 1.9 times 10 to the 12 meters per second squared, which is huge. I mean, you may wonder, well, how many, how many g's is that? Now, when we say g's here, what we mean is we're going to compare that to what it is on Earth. 
So on Earth, we consider 1G is 9.81. This thing is a lot more, right? This is 1.9 times 10 to the 12. And so what we can do then is we can say, well, let's take this number then and divide it by 9.81. In other words, find out how many times does the Earth's gravitational constant fit in this. Of course, that gives us 1.9 times 10 to the 11. So we could say, therefore, that this thing right here is 1.9 times 10 to the 11 times Earth's uh, gravitation, or Earth's g. In other words, this is, this is a huge number, by the way. This right here, this 1.9 times 10 to the 11, that's like saying, uh, what would that be? That would be 190 billion Gs. So if we consider, you know, if you consider sort of on Earth, if you have like two Gs, that means you're feeling twice the force of Earth's gravity. In this case right here, your surface gravity would be 160 billion times G. So this explains a little bit why you wouldn't be wanting to stand here, because you'd be completely squished. I mean, you'd be really in trouble if you stood right there. So that's sort of a fun thing to look at. Another one would be, of that same neutron star, what will be the escape velocity? Now the escape velocity, v escape, I'll just write it like this, v escape, is given by this. Um, I've got some other videos where we explain this, but it's going to be 2gm over r, it's going to be the square root of that. That'll be the escape velocity for any object. So this tells you the escape velocity given a certain distance uh, away from it, uh, or given its radius. Here we talk about the object's mass, and again, this is capital G. That's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So what does it start putting in the numbers? So 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times its mass, which is 4 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. We'll divide all of that by 6,000. I guess that's what we're trying to do here. If you look back here. Oops, that's not 6,000, is it? It's 12,000. Sorry, my mistake. So we're going to divide it by 12,000. There we go. Now we're going to take the square root of all that. So again, we need our calculator. There we go. And I'll just uh, press clear, maybe clear the history. There we go. All right. So I'm ready now. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do, yeah, two times. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Press enter, and I'm going to do that answer times 4 times 10 to the 30. 4 times 10 to the 30. Press enter. I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 12,000. That was the radius of the neutron star. Press enter. And that answer, I'm going to take the square root. So square root of the answer. And then I get this number here, 2.1, and it's going to be times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 2.1 times 10 to the 8. That's going to be this answer here. So V escape is going to be equal 2.1 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's the escape velocity. In other words, if you wanted to get in your spaceship and completely leave this object, you'd have to go this fast to get off of it. Now, how fast is this? Well, this is two-thirds the speed of light. Because remember, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. I mean, speed of light, C, that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this thing, you'd have to go, you know, two-thirds of the speed of light. In other words, you'd have to go really, really close to the speed of light just to get away from this thing. So that tells us that neutron stars, I think, are very interesting to look at in that, um, well, we can do some calculations with them, first of all. But I think it's really fun to, yeah, to try to put some numbers to this, to try to see really what these things mean.